police and other security brutality must stop. According to Adam Grant, precedence is a poor reason for decisions. It classifies the status quo without a compelling rationale. It doesn't matter how long a tradition has stood. If the old ways is wrong, it should be challenged and changed. Progress, they say, lies in improving the future and not defending the past. The obvious high rate of insecurity challenges faced in the country, coupled with the decline in standard of living, is enough to cause civil unrest. The security operatives are also adding up to the people's problems, all in the attempt to make illegal money. The recent happenings around Lagos and Abuja, where Uber or taxified drivers were reported to be conniving with police officers to implicate their passengers of drug trafficking or what have you, is so worrisome. Not to talk about the hill experience of Lagos Bini Expressway or that of illegal harassment within the cities in Nigeria. Recently, the first PRO, CSP Olumuiwa Adejobi, said no Nigerian has the right to confront policemen or retaliate, even if cops slap a civilian. The question is, do they even have a right to slap anyone in the first place? These and many other related issues are of great concern to a senior society. Bad is bad. No matter who is involved, it doesn't speak of age, position, or power. We need to put an end to this madness called security brutality. May God Almighty heal our wounds and bring peace to our land. Elijah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing you said now, I was just thinking about three things here. Let me tell you. Okay. Case 31, the incidents where a last man official harassed a passenger in a vehicle, remember? Mm -hmm. And said, mm -hmm. you look like a Yahoo boy. Exactly. And the boy was bold enough to confront uh, the last man back. Was the man, what right does the last man have to label someone a Yahoo boy? Is he written on the face? Exactly. You don't judge people the way they appear. Of course, I, I agree that they're supposed to be decorum in your appearance in public. Mm -hmm. But you have no business with that, for God's sake. Exactly. In case 32, there's a video circulating online now. Maybe you should go and Google it. Where it's been alleged that the governor of one of the eastern states, I saw it yesterday online. Perhaps we should go back and check it out. You see it online on social media. Now, this governor went to um, 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 inspect an ongoing project, either to, I don't think, commission a road or so, just to inspect a road uh, construction uh, site. Mm -hmm. And then when he got there, in his presence, I don't know what some individuals did, but perhaps they are trespassers or they are liberals. I can't see, but the person that was videoing it was on the other lane from his car. He was capturing the incident where soldiers were flogging some men, flogging them in, the, in front of this government official. They were there. They were like, the soldiers should punish them. What did they do? Even if they did something wrong, can you just find a proper way of doing things? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the three is, why we normalize violence is because it started from the home, officially, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. In most of our homes here, you see a father beating the mother or the uh, father, or, you know, they just allow violence in the street. I feel it's a normal thing. So when you go out on the, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the public and you say you're a police personnel or a military personnel, you just feel, oh, I have to correct this person. He's a king. Who told you that? You are like, it's a disgrace. It's a shame to the country. Mm. We have to stop this. It's, it's abuse of power. You can't just do that. You have no right to beat anybody, even a young person. You, do, you don't have any right to beat a young person on the street, even if you misbehave. Whether you're a policeman, that police officer that says, the PRU, that you don't have a right to retaliate to the policeman. Yeah, I agree. But the question is, um, does the policeman have the right to slap another person? It's, <laughs> it's madness. Exactly. We should do better as a country. Olu Ashegun, what do you say to this? I mean, we keep on harping on these uh, issues around police brutality and other security agencies. I mean, we, we need to speak to these issues and, I mean, get to the root of the root cause, which um, Elijah has been able to mention, mention one. Uh, it's like everyone, Nigerians, we walk around with so much hunger in us, mm. and the, the, the security operatives are not uh, an exception, you know. It's like they leave their homes with all sorts of problems, and they are looking for who to unleash 
<laughs> this this uh, anger on. I mean, I have had my own fair share of police brutality. I was, I mean, fixed away in a gesture post I um, I mean, embarrassed because of a business deal, a, a, a legal business deal that we did. And the way I was arrested, I was never invited. There was no call put to me. You know, I was just stopped abruptly on, on, the, on the way. Then saw these five uh, gun weeding men. It was, they were not in uniform. You know, I, I was weeks away, and then it took the intervention. You know, we believe in God in Nigeria. It took the intervention of God uh, for me to be uh, saved from, from the, the arrest. Because what they actually invited me for could have been explained to them. I mean, they just needed information. Hmm. I was handcuffed. Wow. Yes, on the streets. The embarrassment was so loud. I mean, people went to town with all sorts of news. By the time I came back into the, into the neighborhood, I mean, people were looking at me with different... Uh, <laughs> you know. Instead of uh, uh, so, stigma. So we need to... We need to... The training that our, our service uh, men and uh, the security operatives get needs to be rejigged. Hmm. Our men have to be civil in their dealings. They are not dealing with animals. We are all humans. Hmm. Kuti, uh, you know, I, I said hmm. something about the case of... Uh, okay, he said something about the case of Uber drivers conniving with policemen and telling that if you carry an iPhone or a laptop in your, in your bag, like someone like me now, I'm a working class person, I carry my laptop and my phone, I want to do some stuff. And then I, 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 I get an Uber or a taxi fire and then the guy calls the I'm carrying someone and they stop you. Can I see your laptop? Can I see your phone? I'm sure in the UK, a lot of people goes, goes about with smart gadgets because you have young guys doing quite a lot of things in the UK. So tell us, how do you guys scoop in the UK with these things? And what can we learn from you guys Yeah. There are also instances of police brutality here, but you know, the difference between here and Nigeria is that if those instances are reported or if they come to light, there is heavy, a heavy disciplinary action you know, against the police officers. I think that, you know, again, I will say it again and again and again that the systems only the systems that you have in your country support the behavior of the citizens. If you have a country where a policeman can kill somebody and get away with it, other policemen will do the same. You know, it doesn't mean that, it do, it's not to say that there will not be accidents or there will not be days where somebody just in a bad mood and then attack somebody else. But if, you know, if they, even when they stop to think about what they're doing, you know, and I've been, I've been in the situation that many, many of you find yourselves in, I've been accused of uh, attempted murder before by policemen, they are the ones that told the person what to say because the person told them that this person I'm bringing is highly connected. So they had to bring a very big story, you know? And, you know, it, it just goes to show you the level of discipline in the system. And, you know, um, I've been arrested before, even though I was going to play squash with uh, six commissioners of police. <laughs> so, you know, all sorts of things. So even what right, I always yeah. tell people that you don't even have, it, people say, ah, if you don't know anybody in this country, sometimes even knowing somebody is not enough. Mm. <laughs> because you might be dead before you can pick up the phone to call that person. Sure. Exactly. When I was arrested, I wasn't allowed to use my phone for about three hours. They will collect mm. your phone, yeah. Mm. So I wasn't allowed to use my phone for three hours until one of them took me to the room. And I, now, I didn't say anything to them. And I started to them, look, I want to call this person. When they heard the name, they started begging me. But after, mm. after three hours, I was even crying at some point because I was so frustrated. I had diarrhea. I was ill. You know, it was just, it's just to show you that even a big man, and suffer in the hands of policemen if they decide to, to do that. So what do I suggest? I suggest that, again, we look at the systems that we've created. This system this system we have in Nigeria only creates monsters. It's not just policemen, it's everybody's angry. So at the end of the day, you know, there's, even when you're going, even a big man in that body in the Rolls Royce can come down and start fighting. So I think we don't need now, You mean sure soldiers that. can do that now? <laughs> <laughs> they tell you to start, start doing frog jump before you call <laughs> your general friend. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, you, you said something quite interesting. But let me say this. They said police is your friend. That's the mantra. I mm. want to believe that. Mm. Please, let's reorientate ourselves. I remember, let me give you two scenarios. Case 31, in 2018, I was rounding off my service then and I was applying for uh, something online. And I, I went to the university at that time. I remember the University of Benin with my laptop working 
at the sports complex when sports was going on, these Nuga games. Guess what happened? A police officer that was passing, a senior police officer, I saw, I saw his insignia. He's not other rank, I mean a senior police officer. He was coming down from the staircase. He saw me at the corner, walking on my laptop. He gave me that look, what are you doing here? You know, normal uh, thinking I'm a Yahoo boy or something, in quotes. I was actually assessing the internet just to do something like, uh, and I was working on an academic stuff I need to submit. I was like, why are these people doing like, do you like, take this laptop and girl, you have started again, you know? He made that comment, like that stereotype comment that, oh, you guys, so everybody with a laptop or a tech gadget is bad. Mm. Case 33, 2019, I was in Cameroon and I was traveling for a program uh, at Yaoundé, in Yaoundé. So when I left Limbi to Yaoundé on my way, policemen stopped us on the road and they, of course, those guys, I mean Cameroonian police, stopped us and like, um, ask, asking questions that I think we are not necessary. They are not immigration officers. Uh, give us visa and all those things, thinking they are talking to a novice. And when I challenged the policeman that, you are not supposed to ask me for visa money. We don't give visa money on the road. You are not an immigration <laughs> officer. If I want to pay for visa, I'll do that at the end before exactly. coming. And guess what he said? Mm. He said, your policemen are they better off? Mm. Is that mm. not a disgrace to we Nigerians? So mm. using Nigerian police as a bad example. Mm. So mm. we should do better as a so country. So I, I think I also agree to what you said. I can give, we can keep giving uh, uh, incidents upon incident. I can see even, just like Kuti, I think the solution is we should have a system that punish whoever who that does the wrong thing. When you do something bad, either you're a police officer, you're a civilian, you should be punished for doing something bad. Bad is bad, right? Because I read in the law in police command, a, a, a mm -hmm. case where stolen cars were recovered by, by a police officer. And the police officer was able to successfully recover, but the top rank, had to cut it and say, oh God, this thing is not the real stuff. They had to derang those people. That's an harassment, right? On the road, you see different, different harassments. But well, just to conclude, I think it is good for us to have a system that checkmates everybody, irrespective of you being in power or being in position. It should be a system that tells all this is bad and there's a punishment for it and everybody must not be spared. And if they are doing something good, it should be rewarded. All goes back to a system. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocate continues on our social media platform, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society.